Hey everybody, it's your Average Jeweler, and I am back to answer another big question. I've had this asked many, many times, but it's a little bit hard to encompass everything that you have to answer within this, and that is, why are lab-grown diamonds so expensive? You can find all these other inexpensive synthetic stones. A synthetic sapphire? You could probably buy a nice one for a few bucks. It seems odd that lab-grown diamonds are not the same. So what's going on with this? Is it some kind of scam? Are we really just paying way more than we should be? Or is there more going on here? Obviously, we're gonna answer that today. Stay with me. Just as a disclaimer on this video, it's really hard to make a video to encompass everything that impacts the value or the cost of something. So I may miss a few things. Hopefully this video explains a lot of what goes into the value and the pricing system on something like a lab-grown diamond. I believe a lot of people out there are curious about this but it's not a short answer kind of thing. So bear with me, we're gonna try and get through this together. So maybe you've been shopping online, maybe you were in a jewelry store, or maybe you were just having a conversation with someone and you realized lab-grown diamonds are not cheap. Yes, they are far less expensive than their natural counterparts, but they are not cheap by any stretch of that word. So what is going on here? It seems as though something that's lab created really shouldn't have that much value. And by most standards, you're maybe only saving 30, 40, possibly 50% off the natural diamond. That can be a lot of money, but that's not how we usually see it. It's, I mean, it's a fake, right? It's not even a real diamond. Well, let's go ahead and pull some of these things back, try and tear this apart and answer these questions one at a time. So first of all, yes, lab-grown diamonds are in fact real diamonds. Structurally, chemically, everything about them is what we, do, we would expect from a natural diamond. Now, we do use those words very carefully. If it is grown in a lab, it should be stated very clearly that it is lab-grown, that is, it is a synthetic diamond, and that if, if it is found naturally, you will usually hear, hear words like naturally, or you may hear uh, naturally mined diamond, earth mined diamond. Those are some things that you'll probably hear as far as wording. But yes, a lab-grown diamond is a diamond. So to get that out of the way, we're not talking about just another simulant or something that's just trying to look like a diamond, like your cubic zirconia or your moissanite or white sapphire. Uh, many of those can even be natural stones, obviously, but they're still considered diamond simulants because they're generally purchased to look like a diamond. That's just how the jewelry industry talks about what is a simulant. Now that's one of your biggest things to get out of the way because it's important to understand and know, yes, these are in fact diamonds. Now, the second thing we need to talk about is anytime you have research and development, people spend a tremendous amount of money and time researching something, and diamonds are no different. Those that have put their money and resources into trying to grow diamonds, as opposed to mine them, have had to make some serious cost expenditures to get to wherever they are. And that's just the research side of things. When we start getting into equipment, you have that same type of investment. You have a lot of investment in facilities and in machinery and then in people to man them, just like you would with natural mining, where you have equipment and people. All of those things need to be paid for and that ultimately trickles down to the end consumer because somebody has to pay for it and the person doing it has to have motivation to keep doing it. It's only been within the last decade or two that they've really been producing what we consider gem quality diamonds. They've been able to grow diamonds for a long time. In fact, if you go back to the early NASA days, they were making little windows out of diamond, but it was very different than what we see today. Most of the diamonds of the past, they weren't able to get the colorless variety, the clean variety that we associate with jewelry grade diamonds. 
Along with that same fact, their motivation is not entirely in the jewelry sector. Diamonds are being researched for a lot of technology reasons, and I am no technology expert, but I do understand that there are many different components, both efficiency-wise and just general capability-wise, that diamonds bring to the table when you start talking about technology. So even though we're benefiting from some of that within the jewelry sector, it's actually being heavily invested in for many other reasons as well. Going back into a story where I usually bring this up when I talk about emeralds, is we talk about Carol Chatham, who there's Chatham gems to this day where they grow synthetic gemstones. And his earliest days when he was young, going back to his teen years, I'm not sure his exact age when this incident took place, but I know he was pretty young. He may have even been 11 or 12. He was experimenting in his grandparents' basement trying to grow diamonds and subsequently blew the whole basement up. Now, he was told after this that he was not allowed to pursue synthetic diamonds anymore. So he shifted entirely and started working on synthetic emeralds, another stone at the time that had not been synth synthesized. I give you that little anecdote to just emphasize diamonds are not easy to manufacture, even though we know how to do it. The process and the equipment and the research, these are all investments, and that goes into this process. Another thing to keep in mind is just the timeline. You can find a diamond in the earth and dig it up and essentially keep moving on to that next diamond. Now there's an unpredictability to diamond mining, which is why natural diamonds tend to be so valuable and hold their values because they don't always know how much they're going to find or where they're gonna find it, when they're going to find it. There's a little more of a predictability to growing diamonds, however, there is a long timeline compared to many things that we manufacture. For instance, on a shorter timeline, usually it takes at least a month to grow a diamond. And in many situations, it can take as much as six months to grow a diamond. So it's not a short process. They're not putting it in some kind of a stamping machine and making one diamond after the other. So again, keep in mind the timeline is longer. Another thing that adds to this process, you usually, in many of the, the processes for larger stones, you usually need some kind of a seed diamond. And what that means is they have to use pieces of actual diamond to manufacture a larger diamond. So you have that expense. Now, up until this point, I've talked a lot about just the, the general manufacturing process as we typically view it. But with gemstones, there's more than just growing the stone. And this is maybe where we get into some of the most pertinent and relevant information when it comes to why lab-grown diamonds are still so expensive. And that has to do with the finishing manufacturing portion. When we talk about diamond cutting, diamond cutting takes a great deal of expertise and even time. Now they have developed a lot of things within machinery and lasers and all of those other facets, no pun intended, that help us make nicer diamonds and they help give us better cuts and more consistently. However, a nice diamond is almost always hand finished. It's very hard to duplicate that or replicate that, I should say, with just machines. And so having that step as part of the process always seems to add a bit of cost when we compare it to stones like cubic zirconia or even moissanite because the same care is not taken. However, it does bring me to my final thing, which has to do with the lab report. You could cut corners when it comes to actually finishing and cutting diamonds. And thinking about lab-grown diamonds, it might make sense to, to do that and to try and cut corners in the end part because, hey, most people won't notice that much and you can still sell it as a lab-grown diamond, but you've saved a tremendous amount of money. Where that comes into play with a lab report is the lab report still stands as what should be an objective standard. And I know we talk about color a lot, we talk about inclusions and clarity a lot, and obviously the size of the diamond, that one's a little bit easier to gauge. But when we talk about the cut, you really do have to put it through somewhat of a scrutinizing process, and diamonds are held to a very high standard for what should be cut because ultimately you're buying this stone hopefully for this brilliance when the light hits it. Much of that brilliance is due to the cut. 
and the nicer the cut, the more brilliant it is. So people still care about the quality of cut. I brought this up in my cubic zirconia video that a lot of cubic zirconia in the market is very low quality cut. Now there are some name brands out there, there are some makers out there that do put more care into this, but you have to do your research, you have to look into them. If you're just looking at a generic cubic zirconia piece of jewelry, there's not a high probability they put a lot of time into cutting those stones. So with diamonds, when we look at a lab report, they still have to deal with that cut criteria and they still have to make sure that that stone is finished well because that has a ginormous impact on its value. Because a poor cut stone compared to even just a good cut stone, it's noticeable to the average person. I'm not talking about something that you have to have the report to see that. But the report stands as what should be an objective standard to help the average person make sense of what they're buying and feel like they're actually putting their, their hard-earned money into something that has value. When you're talking diamonds, that scale is way different than when you're talking about something like a car or a house. You're not, you're not talking about those same things. So how do we as the average person try and make sense of something like a diamond? Well, hopefully we get a reputable lab report. And more reputable labs cost more money. GIA, for instance, is not just able to give their lab reports away or their services, they have to charge for those lab reports. Other labs might be willing to make concessions and do it for less, but if you're getting a reputable lab report, that takes time, that takes money, but it also puts pressure on the, the entire rest of the process that they ensure they're making a quality product, and all of this adds cost from one end to the other. At the end of the day, you should expect to pay a lot less for a lab-grown diamond, but it requires a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of investment. It requires labor, both in the manufacturing and after the fact. And then you have costs for that lab report, which hopefully validate all the costs before that. So of course they wanna make an investment during the process if they're going to be judged and scrutinized after the fact. Now there are a lot of companies coming up right now that are doing things a little bit differently and whether that's good or bad is yet to be seen. Um, certainly lab grown diamonds have been under scrutiny as of late because they made a lot of claims about being more green and environmentally friendly, which many of those have been disproven. Um, there are quite a few studies that have been done on that at this point where they're actually using more energy and making more carbon emissions than the average natural diamond were in the mining process. So there, there are some things going on with the whole lab-grown arena right now that could influence pricing, could influence the availability. There's, there's just questions out there. But for some of these companies where maybe they're cutting out the report and the grading process altogether, they're going to be able to save you some money on that. But are you really getting as good of a diamond? Now you don't know. You have to take their word for it as opposed to actually having it go through an official grading system. So you do have options when you look at lab-grown diamonds and you will get them for less. But be mindful of where that value is coming from and understand that they're a completely different animal when it comes to the value side of things. Even though they are the same mineral as their natural counterparts, they're going to be valued on a different spectrum for different things and they're going to be sold accordingly. I really hope that helps. I know that this video has been a bit longer and if you've stuck with me, thank you so much for making it to the end. I really think you need to have all this information to make a good decision or to really understand what's going on. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please hit the subscribe button below. Below, We're really trying to move this along and hopefully make more good content for you. Mm -hmm.